There is little doubt in my mind that when it comes to professional wrestling, 1997 stands out as one of the most memorable and groundbreaking years. Many consider this year the genesis of the Attitude Era, but I would argue that not only had it already begun, but it was in full flow. 1997. Was it the best year in wrestling? It was on a hot summer's evening in 97 that I rediscovered wrestling. Pro wrestling wasn't mainstream in the UK in the early 90s unless you had Sky or cable TV, so I had only seen bits and pieces on VHS tapes or at my friends' houses. But then we got Sky, and Cartoon Network quickly became the channel of choice. But after the channel ceased transmission at 9pm, it became TCM or Turner Classic Movies. Except on a Friday when it ran WCW Nitro. Being starved of any type of wrestling in the UK, I ate it up. However, it was the discovery of Monday Night Raw on Sky Sports that really got me hooked on wrestling. Seeing some of my wrestling idols, like Bret Hart, the British Bulldog, The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels still around, and creating this edgy new version of wrestling had me absolutely captivated. I loved the promos as much as the action in the ring. Of course, I was completely oblivious that these two companies were competing in a war of attrition for ratings. But, it was this fierce rivalry coupled with the WWF's exceptional talent roster that created some of my favorite moments in wrestling. But there was something else. Who was this guy? His attitude was ruthless. He was rude crude, confrontational, and challenged the establishment. He didn't care about the odds, or much about anything, other than whooping someone's ass. He had no friends, no allies, he was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and as a 12-year-old kid, yeah, I was 100% on his bandwagon. I remember getting a VHS copy of WrestleMania 13, and I knew this was the tape I had to see, to understand why Austin had become such a legend. And I wasn't disappointed. I was shocked by the violence, it really felt like watching two gladiators. It was visceral, and even though Steve Austin ultimately lost, I was more on his side than ever. Additionally, I was also witness to the birth of the innovative Hell in a Cell match at WWF's Bad Blood pay-per-view. In my opinion, the original and best match to ever take place in the cell. Finally, The Undertaker was going to get revenge for being dicked over by Shawn Michaels at every conceivable turn. His cohorts, Rude, China, and Trips couldn't help him and it would take place inside this massive steel structure from which there was no escape. It was another spectacle which showcased a level of violence, realism, and storytelling I had never seen before in wrestling, whilst also setting the stage for future groundbreaking matches in the years to come. And then there was Bret Hart and the Hart Foundation. Being a Bret Hart fan from way back when, I loved his stable, even though they were incredibly unpopular in the States. 97 is when Bret Hart did some of his best storytelling and promo work. I tuned in every week to see how the Hart Foundation would fare. After SummerSlam of 1997, it really felt like the Hart Foundation was on top and going nowhere, but by the Survivor Series, Bret Hart was gone and no clear explanation was given why. As a kid, I didn't really understand, and I was heartbroken. So much happened, and so much changed in those five months between June and November 97 that I have been hooked on wrestling ever since. It was edgy, in your face, cool, rebellious, and while there have been plenty of memorable moments since, the magic of 97 has never quite been recaptured. What was your favorite year in the WWF? Leave a comment and tell me why. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more wrestling related content.